There we are. Oh, Paul has dropped out. That's a shame. Okay, thank you for reminding me about that. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to go through a very basic um, shopping cart that you can put into your Dreamweaver site with a very small amount of code. It's, you don't need a huge amount of code um, from it. So basically, you go on to this Equid site. I'll, actually, I'll write it on the um, I'll write it on the whiteboard because um, I'm not sure the chat sometimes doesn't come in with the um, so it's ECWID is the site that you want to be looking for because if you Google Equid, um, it's just equid.com and you set up a, um, a, an account, a free account with those guys. Obviously, um, the more you use it, if you did decide to go down this line and you were doing it for a client, you'd probably go for a paid account because it gives you a lot more um, options and, and flexibility. Um, the free one, as always, will tend to be um, fairly limited, but for the purposes of the assessment, it's totally fine. Um, and I'm just going to go into application share now, um, and I'm going to um, just show you my Firefox to start with, and then I'll come back. In fact, I might just share my entire desktop. That's probably the easiest. Okay. Oh. It's all gone black. What on earth happened there? Oh. <laughs> okay, it's come back to me now. All right. <laughs> it's not what you want. Okay, I'm going to... I don't... You guys have disappeared on me. There we are. There you are. And so, um, just... Um, Hopefully you can see, I know there'll be a grey box because that's the Collaborate chat box, which I'll minimise in a minute, but can you just let me know if you can actually see my desktop just in the chat or a tick or something, just so I can see. Steve, what are you seeing? Uh, nothing. I um, yeah, wonder if you can reinstall Collaborate itself. Yeah, so I think I might have to come next door. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll play with it for a bit and see if I can get in. Otherwise, I'll just um, I'll log out. And no worries, so okay, everyone else can, so that's good. So this is what um, this is what Equid looks like. Um, so you set up your stall, um, your stall, and you, uh, you you just have your login with your um, normal email. Um, and then you can obviously put your profile and things in there and billing and plans and what have you. I mean, obviously, um, you can set that fairly as um, uh, um, just default, really, because you're not actually going to be setting up a proper store here. But, uh, but you know, um, obviously, um, that's all stuff that you can do if you were going to do that. Um, and then you can, vis once you've done, done all that, you can visit your storefront and actually have a look at what your store is going to look like. Now, obviously, you need to set the store up before this. It was a lot quicker yesterday, so I'm not sure. So that's, they, these are things I've already put into my store. And you can see that I've got um, four areas or oh, five areas, sorry, the tripty stuff, and then within there I've got other things. But before we go and have a look at that, we'll just come back into Equid, and um, we can have a look at um, my categories. Sorry. So basically, when you when you start off with um, a, a blank stall, they actually just <laughs> they just give you vegetables to start with. So they give you two categories, which are down here, and there was one fruit and one was vegetables. And then within the, each category, there are your products, and within there there was cherries and apples and what have you. So just to give you an idea of actually how that um, you know come, sets up. So um, to set up a new root category, you would click on there, you give it a name, you can give it, put an image that will come up with it, you can put a little description in there, um, and that's all fine, and you would just keep going through. Um, and then once you actually um, are happy with that, you can go and add your products, 
um, and you can go here and go new product. Now, I've, you actually do reach a limit um, on the free account. That was something I found out yesterday, was it actually only allows you so many products, and once you've filled up with all your products, that's it. And it isn't, it isn't enough for all of the products that, that trip you're trying to sell. Um, that's fine. It doesn't matter if you just put a few in. Um, you go to your limit, and then you know that's that, that that's okay. I, I, at least I can then see that you've got the hang of of creating a little shopping cart and embedding it into your site. So you would do all of this on the Equid um, website. So you go into your products. You can go new product now. It's going to tell me I've reached my limit and I need to upgrade. But um, basically, it's really simple. You just go new product. It gives you. A, it actually puts the code in for you. That the, the, the SKU code, but you just call it what you want. Um, if I show you this one, we'll just go into there. So you can see here that um, I've called it black and red casual. Um, it's gone into my category, it's in is dresses. Um, I've given it a price. Um, I've um, given it a uh, uh, sorry, an image, and then you can manage the gallery and put a few pictures in. So you've been on a trip to you provided you with many pictures of that. So you can manage the gallery, click on there, and load up the images that you want to see. Um, you can go into options. Now I haven't created any options here, so I will. So we go new option, and I'm going to go size. And then the selection will be um, 10, new selection 12, new selection 14. And then just click on the one that you want to be the default. So that's the one that they're going to see. Every time you make a change, it asks you, do you want to save? So you can save. OK, so then when you go back to your dashboard, you see that that code, now I've already copied that code into my website, and I'm going to show you that next. But um, that co that code um, will upgrade. Basically, it just is seeing what you're doing on the site. So you don't need to keep copying the code in. You copy that code in once, um, and every time you make a change, that code will just take it to the Caroline Abbey store. So it's actually seeing what you've what you've done. So you don't need to up update it every time. All you do is you copy the following code block into your web page where you want the product browser widget to appear, and then the widget will work. So I'll show you what it looks like within my Tripti site. So the, I made a mock-up Tripti site yesterday, which is here. Um, so that's the site. Um, that's all fine. I've got an index page, which is here. So this is my home. Um, I've got an about page there, which, hang on a minute, just needs to, the div isn't working very well there. Let's just take it down. Whoops. There we go. I just need to, div needs figure, fi fixing on that one. And then I've got shop, which is what we're interested in. And the shop, that's, oh, I, fit, I faffed around with the div, that's why, the, just before I came in. So that's the issue. That otherwise, the, I might have to just go back in and fix that. Sorry, guys. So I'll just close that down. So in Dreamweaver, um, I've got my index page. Oh, I see what's happened. I've lost. Um, I've lost my div that was there. Let's have a look. Put in content. Yeah. And the shop. Ah, yeah. You see that? It's lost. The shop div. So I created these divs. And there's Um, okay, so it's 80%. Okay, positioning. I'll just make it absolute for now. 
So basically what I've done is I created an index page and I've made and I've just copied and pasted that. So I've just gone to save as for every page. So rather than making a template. But if you had, if I had many, many pages, then I would make a template from there. So I've created a, a div for my logo. Um, I've, I've created a div for my nav and used a spry horizontal which I know you all know how to do by now because you've been watching Paul Tranny many, many times. And I've also created a div for my um, main content. Um, and that's um, obviously, and then I've saved as for each page and just changed the bits that I wanted to change, which really was only this main area here. So it would have been really better to create for me to have created a template there. Um, in the shopping cart, in that div there, um, you can see that what I've done here, if I go into the code, that there is the code that came from um, Equid. So all I've done is I've made the, um, the, the div for it to hold, the, con you know, the content div is there, and I've just made sure that I've placed that bit of code for the shop has gone inside um, my, uh, the, the content div that I had av available for it. Now look what's happened. Deary me, it was all working perfectly a minute ago. <laughs> I've messed around with it and I shouldn't have bothered. I know I was faffing around with it, so I'll just go relative again and then just do. And let me just place it. See? So let me have a look. Width. Um, hang on a minute, guys. 500. Let me just make this into pixels for now. It needs to go top. No, not padding. Hang on a minute. See, it happens to everybody. Gets. <laughs> Should have left it as it was, shouldn't I? Ah, that's why I've got that percent. Maybe. Forty, nearly there. Fifty. Okay, and now I want it to be border books auto. Same for apply. All right. Well, it should be floating here. It should be in the middle. So, <clears throat> sorry guys, it was all working perfectly yesterday. So basically. <laughs> If I try and shift that, I don't know why it's moved. I think it's something to do because I moved I moved all my um, CSS together and I shouldn't have done. I should have kept it outside for now because I was trying to figure out how to actually get that to work for, um, for getting your CSS to be... Yeah, look, now I'm... Just bear with me. That's better. There we go. Okay, finally. So that's kind of in the right place. I would still have to fiddle around with that a little bit. So I'll just save all related. Now if I preview that. In Firefox. That's better. So you can see that now my store is actually where I needed it to be. So basically what had happened is there is um, because I'd moved my CSS around and not, um, I haven't um, extern I haven't attached that as an external um, style sheet yet because I was going to show cache why 
um, her when she goes into live view, it's not working. So it wasn't picking up on that style because it wasn't attached and I'd moved it from its original position. So just to tell you why that was happening. Um, so, but it, you know, you have to fuss and fiddle around a little bit till you get to where you want it to be. But basically, now my div is in the right place. It's in the middle of the, my shop, which is exactly um, where I want it to be. And you can see I've got the various um, uh, uh, categories. So I've got the five categories that there are. I mean, you are limited a little bit with the design of this. You know, obviously, it, it, there's only so much you can do as far as the design. And it doesn't come in with any CSS. So, um, but you know, it works. And that's really, um, that's fine. And I think it's, it's fairly OK. It's quite simple. So if I go into dresses. You can see now that it brings the dresses up that um, Tripti have for sale. And you can click on whichever you know, dress you're interested in. Um, and you can see that you can have a look at the different images. And this all comes in from using that small amount of code. And then you can add that to your bag. Um, now, I haven't got size there, so I'd have to go back in and, and manipulate that in Equid, because really, you obviously, you want to put size in. So if I go back to my dresses, um, I, I know I did put size in somewhere. I think that one, there we are. So teal casual dress, I can choose my size. So that's, you know, 14. I can add it to how many I want. I can add it to my bag. And then when I'm ready, I can go to the checkout. Okay, and then it basically does all of the same things that a checkout would normally do, or I can go and continue shopping. Um, and for that one, you can put quite a few images in if you've got a few images. So there's four images of that particular um, dress. Um, and as long as that code goes in the div where you want it to be, so if you've set up your site, properly, um, not like I did, <laughs> you would have your div in the, in the center and you can just add that little bit of code into the middle. Um, yes, yeah, so sorry that was probably a little bit tricky to, to get because of the div flat flying around all over the place um, and that's because my CSS wasn't um, with it hadn't been aligned to that site. So, um, but that little bit wants me to take a long break. But that little bit of code, is, it's pretty good. And I know that you are limited because it, it does have this look to it. You know, you, you're sort of stuck with the, the look of this particular um, uh, uh, shopping cart. You know, you, you, you blues and you know, your bluey greens and what have you. But um, for the fact that there's an awful lot of coding you're not having to do to get this to work, I think it's pretty good. I'll come back into Collaborate now. So does anyone have any, can you run through the div setup that you did for this? Sorry. So basically, I set um, AP divs, um, absolute position divs. So like Paul Tranny does in his, he, the way he did it, Tash. So he, if you go and watch it again, I know you've watched it many times. But um, particularly if you go and watch the CS6 one, um, he's, he's quite good the way that he does. It's the layout section that you're watching. And he actually sets AP divs first, so absolute position divs, and then um, changes them to percent instead of um, absolute and relative so that they actually will um, flow because the problem is if you don't have a site that is going to um, do that, then you haven't really got a very responsive site. You have to have a site that does that and that was one problem with Paula's site that she had. It was that it, was, um, it wasn't fluid at all. Um, it was actually quite static and we need it to be quite fluid because obviously people might be viewing this on a tablet, they might be viewing it on a, on a, on a mobile device even. So we do need to make sure that it's actually going to work um, in that capacity. Um, so, and it's an easy thing to do. So yeah, go, definitely go and watch, yeah, definitely go and watch the CS6. And um, even if you just pick out bits that you want to watch, um, I, I think he explains it better in the CS6 as well. I've watched both. Um, and I do think that CS6 um, is better. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, no, you didn't have to resize the images. Um, those images that you've been provided with by um, TripTR um, are, are fine. And when you upload them into um, 
into the Equid site, they're actually the, the right size. They, they were taken from the web anyway, so they're not huge images that you're being provided with there. If you were dealing with a real client here and they provided you with some full-on um, large images, then no, you would need to resize them because it has got a limit as to how many um, meg you can put in there as far as images is concerned, so you'd have to make them quite small and just uh, go into Photoshop and obviously resize them in there. So, um, but yeah, it works, it's simple, um, it's probably the simplest one I sort of have found um, as far as uh, a, a shopping cart is concerned. Tash, you got a question? Um, when you put the code in, so say I've got a drop down with the categories, um, do I put, where do I put the code in in each, do I have to put the code in each HTML or does it go across the board from the drop down, if you know what I mean? Because mine's set up a little bit different to yours, it's yours is you've done the shop and started from, from in there, but mine's got the, the actual drop down of all of, all of the, the dresses and the tunics and that. Yeah, that's going to be a little bit difficult because um, you'd have to set up a few stores, I suppose, and get the code for each. Um, thinking about it. Because that code just brings your whole shop in. So that whole shop is my, everything that I've got in my Caroline Abbey store is going to come in with that code. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure how you'd do that with this, whether you could set up a couple of stores. Maybe you wouldn't be allowed to on the free, um, on the free option, you might you might only get one store, so um, it might be easier just to set it up the way I've set it up, um, which hopefully isn't going to take you back too much. Because if you set up a spry um, menu, you can just get rid of the, um, the the drop down if you don't need it. Yep, Tash. Um, yeah, and for the um templates uh, and then going into live view, um, it's still showing as templates, so none of the logo and the um, spry menu is not coming up in the live view for some reason. It's ha it happened once I'd set up the template properly from the last drop-in session. I don't know whether I've lost, do I need to link or how, how do I, what do I do to fix that? Yeah, um, your template will always um, show up like, like that um, because it hasn't got any CSS attached to it. But um, your pages that have been made from the template should Go into, when you go into live view, it should show up um, with all of the design on it or with it. Um, and if it doesn't, it's because you haven't um, you haven't assigned your CSS. You haven't linked the CSS to the um, to the pa to the, the actual pages. So when you go into your um, index and go into live view that's been created from that template. Does it, um, does that show up with everything? No, that, yeah, like even when I go into um, Google Chrome to, to look in there, it's um, not mm. showing up. So I replaced, I went back into the template and replaced the logo to see if that would help. And that's fixed fixed the problem. But rather than me replacing, like, because the spry menu is not like that's still coming up, showing up in Google Chrome as, as a like it is in the template. 
Um, so I'm not sure what I've done, but um, am I missing? Yeah, what am I? What am I missing? Um, it's probably because your CSS isn't linked um, in. So basically, what you need to do is once you've got your CSS um, sorted out, um, then you need to um, just if you click on all the bits um, that are within it. So um, you'll have style if it hasn't got a name yet, and you'll have all of your little bits that you've changed within it. So I'm going to, this will probably mess my slide up now, but that's okay. So basically what you do is you shift um, and sort of, you know, shift select all of the bits that are within your um, style sheet. And then you right click on there and then you go down to move CSS rules. Um, and we're going to um, call it whatever we're going to call it. So I'm going to call this um, tricky or you can call it whatever you want to. It's got an L on the end, I don't want that. Tripty. I'm going to get a new style sheet is what we're going to do, sorry. Move rules to a new style sheet, OK. And then we're going to save this as Tripty. And we're going to save it as Tripty.css because it's a CSS style sheet. We're going to say save. It's going in our root folder. And the destination, yep. Okay, so that now is um, been has been assigned to the site, so that's called Tripty CSS, and that is actually now assigned to this site. Now, if you haven't done that, it probably can't see the CSS um, that's actually running the style of your site, and that's why when you go and preview it or you go into live view, um, you're not seeing what you want to see. So. Um, that could be the issue. Have a go at that. Again, if you go and watch the um, CS6 Paul Tranny um, and go and have a look at CSS, he goes through that as well um, as to how to uh, assign your CSS and save your CSS. Because that CSS now, I've saved it as a style sheet, that could actually be assigned to multiple sites if I wanted it to. You know, I could start, I could style multiple sites with that actual style sheet. Sorry. Um, which would have the styling of the, what the text looks like, it would have the styling of my nav, it would have this background in there, so anything that I've, I'm um, controlling through my CSS would um, come through in, in a different site if I attach that style sheet. So, um, yeah, so it's possible that you've, you've not attached your style sheet yet. So, up oh, yet? Yeah, no worries, Tash. Um, yeah, I'll have a go at that. I'll watch. I'll watch the um the six one and see how it goes. Um, also, with the site map, do I have to create a site map within this website? So, there's does there need to be like a site map in a footer or somewhere? to click on and have all the links in there for the whole website? No, um, with your sitemap that you're providing for TripT, um, you basically just need to provide, which you've already done, as to how the site's going to be mapped together. Um, so, um, no, you don't need an actual sitemap within the actual site itself. So, um, that's fine just to just the, what you've already done. Um, so yeah, I know that that's fairly basic as shopping shopping carts go, but I just thought it's actually pretty good because it's quite simple. 
um, compared to some of the other ones where you're actually, like the way Paula did it was a lot more in, involved. Um, she actually had to create shelves and so she used, um, so Paula, did you, so did you use the simple cart and uh, attach your code that way? Yes, I did, and um, yeah, it was. It was. I, I mean, I I think it was pretty easy, but I found it really complicated. And like I say, I need to. I did ask for help because he he wasn't performing the way I wanted. And um, yeah, I think this one that you just show is is basic. Yes, um, it's limited in in terms that the way it looks, but um, you know, it's really straightforward and. You know, it's easy, and I wouldn't recommend um, the other one. I think it was really high. Um, yeah, girls, try that. I think that's, that's the way to go. Thanks, Paula, especially because this isn't really a crucial part of what you're learning. Um, if it was something that you, you know, if you were becoming a developer, then that would be a different story. I would be expecting you to be able to code um, the full store yourself, but that's not what we're teaching you here. What we're teaching you here is um, about user experience, um, good web design. Um, you know, you do need to learn a little bit of code, so there are, you do need to know how to create a template, you do need to know how to use CSS, and you do need to um, be able to learn, know a little bit about HTML, which I think you've all got to that stage already. Um, as far as full-on developing for things like shopping carts and things like that, um, that's more involved than you will ever need to learn. Um, you need to know how, how what a, shop, a good shopping cart looks like as far as its design is concerned, um, how you might make it usable and, um, you know, people wanting to shop, those kind of things. Um, but as far as actually the coding of it, no, it's not necessary. So, and as I said, from from our feedback to industry, um, in industry, it was really was, you know, we would never expect a designer to do much coding. And what you would do is you would create um, Photoshop um, files uh, for with with the layers for each um, of the pages as to how they're going to look, and then those PSD files would go to a developer, and that they would code um, accordingly to get it to look like and do sorry not look but do what you want it to do. Now, um, obviously, you do need to know a little bit about what is possible. Um, in web design, as well as um, a little bit about, you know, the coding as, okay, well, that link there, I wanted it to, as the mouse is rolled over, I want it to go to a different color. Now, I know that that's possible and you need to be able to um, communicate with a developer so that they know that that's what you want, um, but actually doing the developing no, you don't need to know that, but uh, you do need to know how to create good, um, responsive, and functional websites, which um, you know you've all you've all worked on, and I know that you've got those skills. So, um, so yeah. Um, but uh, this at least gives you that um, the knowledge that uh, you know this is actually um, the developing of a shopping cart is pretty full on, um, but you could if you needed to use some of the tools to, to either a CMS like WordPress or, um, you know, something like this where it's pretty simple um, and it gets you to the end. So, uh, but mostly you'll be outsourcing to developers to get that to, do, to ha happen. But you need to be able to talk confidently in web talk um, and so it's good for you to know all of these things as far as what a CSS does and, and what you can, can can control with CSS and, um, you know, the fact that a site needs to be fluid and it needs to be responsive and things need to flow and those kind of things, that, all that kind of um, stuff that you would never have known before you did this uh, um, cluster. So, yeah. Tash, do you think, you, um, and Joe, do you think you've probably um, good to be able, be able to keep, keep going with the Tripti site and... Um, Get us get a bit of a shopping cart that's working to a certain extent. As I say, it's only going to have ten products in there, but that's fine. What about you, Joe? How are you feeling? 
Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I always find it easy if somebody kind of shows you, obviously not quite at this stage yet, but I'm obviously willing to have a go and see where we go with it. I'm, I'm actually <laughs> sort of stuck before that already. I did post something yesterday because I'm actually a little bit, um, don't know why, but my um, contact page isn't quite working properly, so I don't know if there's any time at the end of this for me just to tell you, but um, otherwise you can just respond to the um, uh post if you would please. I saw that yesterday and I flagged it because I need to have a little play myself. Um, so I was going to, after this, go into my contact page and create a form and, um, sorry, and uh, see, so there we are, look, I'm going to create a form in there um, and um, and just see what happens to mine because um, yeah, again, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a developer and I'm not a coder, and so when questions like that get asked, I do need to have a reply myself. Um, it could be, um, so what error message are you actually getting, Joe? What does it say? You said it doesn't recognise the site. What, in exactly what, if you can remember, word for word, what does it actually say? Basically, I've got it set up on my um, page, the actual contact form, and when I go to uh, test it on the browser, um, the form works perfectly, um, basically with messages and the thing and accepting all the email, but when I actually send it, <laughs> it doesn't. It just it doesn't send it, and I don't know whether it's supposed to actually be sending me an email or whether that's just a mock thing, and it um, doesn't actually supposed to work. But I'm assuming it would because the fact that we had to put our email address in the um, uh, in the code to to where it was supposed to send to. But I th I think my problem is. Um, <laughs> possibly the it's just not talking that contact page isn't talking to the um, uh, the the PHP that we had to put in. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It could also be um, so your mail server. Which which mail server have you got set up as your default? Because that can often be the issue as well. Um, but I know with my, when I tried to do it a couple of years ago, um, my mail server, my default mail server wasn't set up correctly and so it wouldn't set, uh, it wouldn't actually send the form. But I was going to do a quick run through myself today and then I was going to get back to you um, on that one. So um, I can't answer it off the top of my head right now, but uh, once I've had apply myself, hopefully we'll be able to come up with an answer as to why it's doing that. So, um, but again, don't stress over it too much. If you've done a form and it's got to that point, then that's fine, and um, but it'd be nice if I can answer the question for you. Um, St Steve and I had a little talk about it this morning. We did both think that perhaps it was the mail server, um, but again, without running through it myself, it might be a bit tricky. Look, I haven't even I've got I haven't, I haven't set up anything um, as a default. Um, uh, I mean, I haven't looked into that. Is what I mean. So I don't know what the default mail server is. Um, not even sure where to look, so I'll probably have to Google that as well. Um, are you on a PC or a Mac, Joe? PC. Um, where does, uh, well, Steve will be able to answer this question, I think, better than me. So where do you go to set up your mail server, um, Steve? You mean your control panels or? Uh, that in, depends on entirely who you're with. Is it like a Big Pond one or a Gmail one? Or uh, yeah, it depends on who your your, your host is, basically. Well, my mine is Big Pond. So all I've done basically is follow Paul Tranny. So when he is um, when we got the PHP um, file in, we had to put you know who it was going to be sending the emails to and um, it was and I had put in my uh, email address there which is uh, a big pond address but I mean obviously he had something 
completely different, I guess. <laughs> You know, it's normally, um, like, say, whatever yours is, jcigs, um, dot bigpond dot mail or something like that. Does that sound familiar to, as to what you're putting in? My, my email address is j dot sigs at bigpond dot com. So you um, you probably need to Google it, but your server would be, um, Big pond dot mail or something like that dot com. I'll, I'll have a quick look now if you like. I'm just just one minute. Um, well, if you want to um, move on to something else, I'll just have a quick look. Quick look at what the big pond servers are. It wouldn't be the pop mail, would it? Does that mean anything to you? Yeah, well, it can either be SMPT or POP3. Yeah, POP server. Um, I'll just have a quick Google and I'll get back to you in a tick. Thanks, Dave. Um, so, yeah, so any, any other queries or questions? Um, so, obviously, Paula's beyond this anyway, so she's gone past it and got into um, multimedia. Um, but yeah, I think the best thing, and, and I've upgraded multimedia now for you guys, so um, it is more um, what's happening in, the, in industry. I mean, obviously, we've got units of competency that we actually need to see that you have can do certain things, um, but we also need to make sure that we are reflective of what's really happening in the industry, and so it's, it can be a bit of a juggle in the fact that we need to get certain evidence from you, but then again, we don't want to push you and scare you too much into certain areas of this with, with where you think, well, this is just too scary. So that's why we wanted to make sure, no, it's not a really, no, it's not a long cluster, no. It's, and it's actually called digital media, not, not uh, multimedia. Now we've changed its name. Again, from, from feedback from industry, multimedia is an old term, which we should no longer be using. It's a little bit difficult when our actual training package is called, um, uh, called uh, multimedia, but uh, yeah, no, it's it's not as not as long as web design. That's for certain, and um, it's uh, it, yeah, you, there's not as um, there's there's some animation to do, but it's not there's no coding involved at all. So um, you'll be happy to know. Um, so Steve did answer answer the question there. So sorry, Steve, I'll give you the mic. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking of, Joe. The mail.bigpond.com would be your mail servers. Um, hopefully, that's what you're looking for. I don't even know where I'm. Sorry, I'm being really thick here, um, but I, I, I'm not even sure where I'm even supposed to be looking for that. I know that that pop three is when I set up my email account and everything. Um, but I've, in regards to this particular thing, where am I supposed to be looking for it? Sorry. Yeah, I'm not sure, Joe. I'll, I'll have a look at that Paul Trani, um video and um, see how he does at his end. Because there's quite a few ways of sending a mail in certain email, email um, contact forms. So somewhere you do actually have to tell it where the mail server is and others where you just put in um, an email address. So I'll have a play today and I will get back to you definitely this after, by this afternoon with what I find. Um, Tash? Yeah, um, now that I have to change, so like, now that I have to set up my Spry Mini Bar similar to yours with, say, the shop, and then have, instead of having the drop downs for the different um, categories, I've already created the HTMLs for each of those pages, so what, what should I do, to, what do I have to do to get rid of them HTMLs from linking, like, do I just delete them completely or, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I would just delete them if you've got them in there. So if I go into my index, um, well now that I've changed, I knew that that would happen. So now that I've changed all my um, CSS, obviously I'm not <laughs> I'm not seeing anything that I need to see. But yeah, basically um, when you go into your um, uh, onto your uh, spry menu, then you get you click on the little tab that's above the spry menu, and you can actually um, edit it through the properties of that spry menu. And if you've got the links there, if you've got pages already, so you've got accessories page, um, accessories.html, and dresses.html, then you can just delete those HTMLs, um, and then if you delete the um, sub, so on your spry menu, you'll have um, obviously item one, item two, item three, item four, and then if you've got a sub little, which is a fly out, and you can just delete those as well, and that will just get rid of all of that. So, and then just keep it nice and simple with just a, a shop. So you might have home, about, you might have blog, um, and contact, or you could have um, a link from about into blog, depends how you set it up, so it's up to you. Okay, um, so hopefully that's as clear as mud. <laughs> um, I will get back to you, Joe. I'll, um, I will send you the assessment as well, um, assessment brief, so you at least can be getting on with that, or at least having a look at it. And um, I will get on with looking at the, right now, I will get on with looking at the contact form and setting up a mail client. And I'll get back to you in the discussion board. So yeah, um, hopefully that's helped. That was the simplest shopping cart I could find. There may be others out there. Um, I did try and find one that was a little bit, had a bit more, um, flexibility in the way that it looked, um, but they were all, you had to pay for all of them, so I was trying to find a free one as well, obviously, um, and so that would seem to be the best, I mean, I looked for half a day and that's what I came back with, but if you find another one, um, then by all means, go with it, if it's as, if it's as simple as that one, um, it's just a little bit of code. Um, I did have a go with the PayPal buttons, but there's an awful lot of code comes in with the PayPal buttons, which is crazy. It was just ridiculous. Um, yeah, um, definitely. And then please let us know if you find one that you think is better. I'd be, um, we're always happy to hear things that are better than what we found. Um, but the PayPal buttons were, oh, they worked. They were fine, but um, they were they were quite code heavy, and um, you had to set one up for every single item you were selling as well, which I thought was that was just ridiculous. So that wasn't the way to go at all. Um, the as Paula went with the um, uh, simple shopping cart one, that I had another look at that. I had a look at that. It did seem a lot more involved because there was quite a lot of code having to go in at various different areas, whereas this is just it's linking back to a to a site. So, but. Good luck with it, guys. Um, try and keep try and keep um, keep it simple. I know I've said that before, but uh, and just think you're learning as you're going along. Code scares everybody, Joe. So you know, but you do need to know a little bit about it. So the easiest way to learn, I think, is to always work in split. Um, rather than just design, because when you go in split, then you can actually see the code as you're doing things, which can sort of, it starts to make sense the more you work with it. Do you have a question, Jo? Uh, actually, it says, well, sorry, very quickly, I just wanted to let you know, you know all the issues I was having with um, doing the um, templates. Well, you were absolutely right, I did have some code, it seemed to automatically put some code out of place and by explain, by working out that code and seeing what it was, I've managed to get rid of it and it's worked perfectly well since, so thank you for that. That's brilliant, I'm glad that that, that, that you worked that one out and there was a bit of stray code, it's, um, yeah, look, I mean, because I don't use, and neither does Steve, we don't use Dreamweaver that often, and when we come into it, you know, it's suddenly like, 
Oh my goodness, okay, let's remind ourselves about all this again because, um, and, and it is so foreign to what you normally do, so, um, but uh, as you start working in, I mean, you guys have been working in it now for quite some time, so you'll be getting a lot more confident and each time you do it, I know it's just like, oh God, I've got to start this thing again, you know, how many times do I have to make a build? But sometimes you do have to build a site, you know, five, six, seven, eight times, um, right from scratch, but every time you do it, it it becomes, um, it, things pop into place a little bit easier and um, you start to feel how things work a little bit better and um, and even just making dummy sites, you know, um, it, it, um, it certainly, uh, you know, just it just helps just, you know, if you, if you, if you get away from web design for a while and it's something you want to go into, I would um, definitely recommend that you keep your hand in Dreamweaver and just make the odd dummy site every now and again and go back and watch a few Linda videos because um, uh, it's something that you, you, you can forget. I know I have, I have for definite, so uh, yeah. But yeah, five times for a rebuild. At least, I mean, and you're not having to rebuild. It's not as bad as having to do a whole design again, I don't think, in a way, because it's like um, you've got all the elements. It's just a case of putting them together on a page. It's not like you're having to rewrite all of your information or create all the images together. It's just a case of getting things to work um, in a site. So the rebuild isn't as bad as rebuilding something like in, in design where you're having to create things all over again. So... Okay, guys, well, um, it has been recorded, which is good for, um, I shall come out of application share, so, hmm, goodness me, I can't even see my application share, oh, there we go, it's there, stop. Beautiful. Um, so go and have a look at Equid, if you find another one, brilliant, let us know, and um, Take care. If you do need another one, just shout out. That's what we're here for. It's good for me too because usually the day before I'm sort of going, oh, okay, better get better get myself skilled up in that again. So <laughs> keeps my skills happening too. So uh, it's um, it's good. Okay, and uh, take care. Have a lovely rest of the day. And uh, Joe, just watch out in the discussion board because I'll be answering that uh, this afternoon sometime once I've had a play. Thanks a lot. I'll stop the recording.